Beauty and Catholicism session will be on Wednesday, March 24th in English. The topic will be understanding the building blocks for how the church makes moral decisions. Basic moral principles too. The time is finally here to register for the Iron Sharpens Iron Men's Conference on April 23rd at 7 p.m. and April 24th at 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Please look for the link on the parish website and our Facebook page. Please tune in for the next Evangelizing in Joy and Truth with Coffee and Donuts on Saturday, March 27 at 10 a.m. This will be on Facebook Live. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament will be in the chapel until Easter Sunday, as regularly scheduled. We are having olive wood carvings available to purchase after all Masses next weekend. The proceeds are to support Christian Catholic families in the Holy Land, since it is the major source of income for them there. More than 75 families in Bethlehem hand carve these items. They're very beautiful and unique items, nativities, crucifixes, rosaries, statues. The Christian population has dropped from 22% to less than 2% in the last two decades. And this is a way to support uh, them to stay there. There will be a work party next Saturday morning. That's March 27. We will need people to bring wheelbarrows, rakes, shovels, and other tools for spreading of mulch and other garden tools for edging, weeding, and planting as well. Please join us. Justice, O oh God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless from the deceitful and cunning. Rescue. and your truth, they will guide me all, they will bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is Deceitful and cunning, rescue me, for you, O oh God, are my strength, and I will come 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather this evening, you can recognize that we've arrived at the fifth Sunday of Lent, because all of the statues and holy images are covered to remind us once again that Jesus has not yet died on the cross, and so no one has either entered into heaven. There are no saints that are there at this point. Huh? So we come recognizing the gift that we receive even in the Lord's uh, crucifixion, his death on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, and that rising to new life which opened to us the gates of heaven. We ask him again for his mercy, that we might be made worthy to receive and participate in these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All 
from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. in me, O God. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Give me back the joy of your salvation, Spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart in me. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip 
went and told Jesus. Jesus answered, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will be my servant. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now. Yet, what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was a thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, one thing before we, I really get into the homily, you, I was just looking at this as I was uh, bowing before the altar there. Also, notice that the cloth doesn't hang exactly perfectly on the crucifix up there, right? So we determined when we were doing this earlier that if anybody decides to complain about that, that they can help next year. Okay. <laughs> okay. So just remember that. <laughs> a line for the, from the gospel that I want to begin the homily with to help us focus. I think the readings are very powerful readings. If we can tie them together also, there's a powerful message that's there. So stay on your toes for this homily. You're going to need to follow things. I am troubled now, Jesus says in the gospel, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour, but it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. It's the reason that Jesus came to this earth, to die even for our salvation. St. Cyril of Alexandria says this, death could not have been defeated except by the death of of the Savior, nor any of the other sufferings of the flesh. For unless he felt dread, human nature could not have become free from dread. Unless he experienced grief or was troubled, even as he said in the gospel, or alarmed. The Lord Jesus experienced every one of the human emotions which assault human nature they can be found in Christ, St. Cyril says, so that they might be thoroughly subdued by the power of the word dwelling in the flesh. 
the Word being the Son of God, thereby changing the nature of man for the better. In the first reading, the Lord says to us that he must make a new covenant with us. And he says this because the people had broken again that covenant with the Lord. And we know the history in the Old Testament that that happened time after time. People were breaking the covenant. How is a new covenant established? We talked about this a few weeks ago also. It's established by the shedding of blood. And so there are animal sacrifices that happen even there. And the blood of the animal is even then sprinkled on the people, which we can think, oh my goodness, that's disgusting, right? But as we stand at the foot of the cross, every time that we gather at the Mass, it's as if we're reestablishing that covenant because Jesus established a covenant with the shedding of his blood on the cross. God created a covenant with us again, and this time it's not an animal sacrifice, but it's the blood of Jesus himself. It's the blood of God who spills his blood to establish a covenant that will endure so that we can't break that covenant any longer. It's for this purpose that he came into the world, to unite our nature to his because we kept breaking those covenants. And in doing so, what was said of those covenants is that if it was broken, then whoever did the breaking of the covenant places themselves under a curse for breaking that covenant, meriting the same death that the animal received in that slaughtering of the animal. We merit then even that kind of death, but Jesus comes on so that as comes down to this world, so that as he takes on our human nature and unites it to the divine nature, it's himself that is making that covenant with himself for us on our behalf, for humanity and for God. He makes the covenant from both sides, sealing the covenant then again with his blood. We call it the hypostatic union. How many of you know what that means? The hypostatic union. It's the combination of the divine nature and the human nature in one single divine person. Jesus Christ is a divine person, not a human person. To say he's a human person would actually be a heresy. But he takes on our human nature. He takes on our humanity and he unites it to his divine nature. Again, and hypostatic, I even went to look that up again in the dictionary, which I do from time to time for homilies. Hypostatic, this is what it says. The substance or essential nature of a person. So our substance, our essential nature is united to the substance, the essential nature of the divine person as Jesus comes and takes on that humanity. Ours, our nature is united to his and his to ours. And when he then sheds his blood, he pays the debt for us that was owed to the devil because we first fell into sin. By one sin, even the smallest of sins that we may commit, not just thinking about the one of Adam and Eve, but even one small sin that we commit, our life is owed to the devil, or better said, our death is owed. But Jesus, the innocent one, pays that debt for us, a debt that we could not pay, so that we don't have to pay it. But in an incredible twist also, the devil is defeated because Jesus was the innocent one and forfeit his life. Being killed while innocent, the devil then no longer had any kind of claim on us, no right to claim us, to claim our life. Unless, as we heard last weekend also in the gospel, unless we deny the one who died for us, and then we take that death back upon ourselves. 
That's why we heard last week in the gospel, whoever believes will not be condemned because Jesus died for that one who believes, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned. Why? Because they place themselves back under that original curse if we don't believe. It's why even when we suffer, in life, we should say the same things that Jesus says, I'm troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. Father, Father, glorify your name. When we suffer, why do we offer it up? It's a common phrase, right? We've heard it since the time we were kids, and if we haven't, and your parents should be saying it to you. Maybe they should still be saying it to us, even as adults. Why do we offer it up? Because Jesus offered it up. For this purpose, he came into the world. You also have come into this world, in this time even, to recognize that the more that we do the same as Christ, the more we offer it up, the more free we become. The more closely we are united to him, the more we glorify God. Do we say again then, deliver me from this hour, or Father, glorify your name? And the voice we hear, Jesus says, is not for him, it's for us to hear. What did the Father say? I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. How will God glorify his name again? In you and in me. Every time that we offer it up and we say to the Lord, not deliver me from this hour, deliver me from this suffering, but Father, your name be glorified. The more we follow his commands and die to ourselves, the more the ruler of this world is driven out even from us. That's what Jesus said, the time has come for the ruler of this world to be driven out even in you and in me. And that happens again every time that we lay our lives down out of love for Jesus. And we glorify then God. And the time has indeed come for the judgment on this world, as Jesus said in the gospel. Which way will you and I choose? Will we live for the worldly desires and inclinations, taking selfishly for ourselves and living against God's law, therefore denying Christ, placing ourselves also back under that condemnation, denying Christ and his teachings that they truly are divine, do we deny that? And then place ourselves again under that condemnation? Or do we allow a death to self? Do we choose to allow ourselves to die to ourself and to worldly desires and inclinations which will bring us life and glory in Christ Jesus? God desires for us to share in his glory for all eternity. Will we reject it by being short-sighted and seeking what appears to be glory in this world, but is only really an enslavement, taking death back upon ourselves? Or will we accept this glory that God does, that desires for us by keeping our eyes fixed on the prize and choose to follow and to do the good We can't become blinded, though. To remember, oh, I missed a part. <laughs> this is what happens when your notes are all over the place. Jesus went through all that we do, even as I talked about in the very beginning, to show us that he is here with us. We are called to turn to him in those most difficult moments and receive his grace again and again in those moments, recognizing that his law is written on our hearts and choose to do 
and to follow the good, but not to become blinded by sin. Sin, as we hear in the Catechism, also darkens our intellect so that we can't really see what is true and good and beautiful. We may think that we're seeing clearly, but the reality is when we have given ourselves over to sin or even given a belief over to sin, that we aren't seeing clearly, but rather that we have erroneously formed our conscience by our attachment to sin. We always, though, have a touchstone, the scriptures and the official teaching of the church so that we can pop properly form or reform our conscience, taking on more and more of that identity with Christ, uniting him ourselves to him, even as he sought to unite himself to us by taking on flesh and dying for our salvation. May we, with the help then of God's grace, allow ourselves to die to self and die to worldly desires that are contrary, the ones that are contrary to God's ways. May we die to those things so that we might receive life in this world, freedom in this world, and life into eternity. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, as we gather once again before you, we ask you to open our eyes and our hearts to seek to follow your will, to glorify your name rather than glorifying ourselves. We ask for the graces that we ourselves need in order to do so and that the world needs in order to turn away from sin and seek to follow what you have commanded of us. That all members of the church may profit richly from the graces that God offers them in their Lenten duties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the faithful obedience of believers in all nations may attract non-believers to Christ, the source of eternal salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community may shine out as a sign of Christ, lifted up from the earth 
drawing all to himself. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, especially Edward Beta, Michael Eugene Childs, Cliff Fillow, Marion Huffman, Eleanor Rose Lapita, Mavash Price, Mary Hogland, and Mary Dechenes, may they be healed in body and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those, for those who have died, that Christ may cleanse them and bring them to glory, especially Patricia Carly, Lourdes Minda Saturnino, and Corazon Santander. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Isidro Alejandro Lopez, for whom this Mass is being offered, for the prayers in our book of intercessions, and for those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers according to your holy will, for we ask them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you. 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having installed in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time by the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Deus Sabaoth, To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, my temptation, I Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, and Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
which remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the remains a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. As for the holy ones who dwell in the land, they are noble, and in them is almighty love. remains a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall. remains a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go for the Mass ascended. Thanks be to God. So evangelizing with joy and truth uh, will continue once again. Um, interestingly, uh, not, probably most people don't know this, but there's a reason why our last episode was, uh, is not on YouTube. It's because we were censored um, for the video. So we encouraged people to, have, to receive the vaccine. I don't know exactly why it was uh, censored, but it was censored nonetheless by YouTube. It's still on Facebook, but not on YouTube. Um, and so it's the way of the world, I suppose, in these days. But uh, anyway, so evangelizing with joy and truth and coffee and donuts uh, will be again this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. Maybe watch it before it gets removed. Um, and we'll be uh, talking in part at least about the Equality Act also that is uh, trying to be pushed through all the levels of government. So the, um, and the adult education series, the beauty of Catholicism is also continuing uh, this week. Last week we talked about uh, the first level of basic moral principles. And this uh, coming week will continue with basic moral principles too. So it's not the same class, it's a different class. But that'll be again right here in the church. But that also is on Facebook and ultimately gets put onto YouTube. That has not been removed yet, so there you go. Um, then there are bulletin hard copies once again. So we've uh, brought the bulletins back. Um, the hard copies of those, you'll have to pick them up yourself as you go out of the church. We won't be handing them to you. And then also out uh, at the exits of the church, there should be the vaccine letters as well, right? So again, the bishops have said that that's our duty even to um, send those in to the companies that have produced the vaccines so that moving forward in the future, they would do so in a completely moral way. Um, so that there's no moral reservation that's there for us to use them. The chant workshop is happening this coming Thursday at 6.30, right? 6.30 p.m. right here in the church will be the chant workshop, so you're welcome to please come to that. And you can uh, sign up for the Iron Sharpens Iron Men's Conference uh, by going to our parish website, also, so that uh, will happen on April 23rd, that evening. Father Spitzer will be here, um, and he will be speaking on that evening. And then again on Saturday, he will be here as well speaking. So he is the keynote speaker for the men's conference this year. There's a work party that's happening next Saturday also. So if you missed the last one, you're welcome to join us uh, for this one this coming Saturday right after the morning mass, uh, to let people know also, because there are so many things that are coming up in the church with practices, both for the school having practices, and of course, having practices for all the different Holy Week uh, events as well. Um, adoration will be happening in the chapel as opposed to the main church. So just to keep that in mind as we have adoration every day from 1 until 6 p.m. and then on uh, Fridays from after Mass in the morning until 7 p.m. 
except first Saturday, which is all throughout the night, also, or first Friday, which is also throughout, all the way throughout the night. Confession times are this Wednesday again, so remember we talked about that a while back. So this Wednesday, confessions will be from after Mass in the morning, so about 9.30 until 5 p.m. Then I'm gonna, I have to cut them off at 5 p.m. so that I can get ready for that adult education series class that I'll be teaching at 6.30. And then after that class is done, I'll resume confessions again at 8.30 p.m. and hear confessions until 11 p.m. So we're at that time already. We're only a week uh, away from Holy Week, right? So uh, confession times. And then there will be confessions again on Friday uh, evening as well, as well as, of course, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday mornings, and Saturday afternoons. So plenty of time still to get confession in. Don't wait till the last minute, though. Feels like, oh, I know what else I was forgetting. Yes, okay, so uh, you've probably noticed me, I don't know, maybe you haven't, but so this mask that I'm wearing or that I have on my, in my hand that normally I'm wearing on my face, it's a St. Brendan. It has a little logo there with the name St. Brendan on it. Um, and we have about 240 of those, I think, left um, because we gave them to new parishioners, families that have come in over the last couple of months. Um, so we gave away about 50 there, I think. And then... Uh, so if, please take one only if you're really going to use it, right? So if you're not gonna use it, don't take it so that someone else who would use it uh, can't have one, right? So uh, we'll keep about 50 out here or so, maybe 60 out there um, for after this mass and then we'll offer that to people. We can order more if we need to also, I suppose, but um, it takes work. People actually had to do the little logo on there. That was people from the, the, our parish families that did that. So um, a big thank you to them also. Let's pray our St. Michael prayer then. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you'll notice the uh, emblem or the logo that's there, it's the sail of the St. Brendan sailboat, right? And then St. Brendan, the name, is taking the place of the boat itself, right? So, very good. And that was designed by one of our own parishioners as well. Have a blessed week, everyone.